everybody let's just worship the Lord as we get started here Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you all of you for ushering in Shabbat with me. <laughs> the sun just went down and we are able to usher in. Hallelujah. Uh, welcome everyone. Welcome. This is your first Friday here. Um, Stephanie, thank you so much. I'm so excited to have you. The two of us together doing this is great. Yes. We're a great team. Glad all to right. be here. Okay, so um, I wanted to do some quick announcements before we get started. First of all, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I know that it's not Shabbat for most of you, but it's Shabbat for me. So hallelujah. <laughs> um, we have a special going on for the Rooted Cafe right now. And that special is that your first month, if you invite your friends, tell them. And you, if you're not part of the Rooted Cafe, your first month's 50% off. So it gives you a chance to jump in and see if it's really for you or not. And um, so, and you'll love it. And you'll love it. Um, all of the reasons why, hmm, there's over a thousand hours of teaching uh, from amazing teachers, amazing teachers. We have courses, we have um, teaching, we have groups that are live that you can jump in and join. Um, the instructors are all available. So uh, it, it's an amazing opportunity. And for less than $20 a month and your first month, 10 bucks, pretty cool. So I really encourage you. Um, 
ask for it if you if if you need a Hanukkah gift, ask for it in advance. <laughs> so there you go. If you for the whole year, you can get this for Hanukkah. Okay. Ladies, we want to know where you're at. So jump in on uh, the sister finder. So you go to www.therootedcafe.com and uh, you'll see right at the top, you'll see the thing that says sister finder. Just click on that. It's all free. That part's all free. Uh, and then put your address in the city. Uh, it won't give your street address, but um, put that in and then you'll be able to find women that are close to you. So I'm waiting for some more Berliners to jump on. <laughs> so if you're out there, jump on and we can meet up. So I would love to meet up with some of you. Okay, so Sister Finder. And then the other thing is grit. Part of the Rooted Cafe, the um, the men's portion that has been birthed through this uh, is called grit. And so all of you, your husbands can... Uh, jump in and gather monthly. So just send a message on band, go to band. You all need to be on band uh, in the portion and just um, request that uh, you get the information about um, the men's group Grit. They have fantastic speakers all the time. And it's just really lovely to hear those men praying and and uh, loving on their loving on their wives and learning all kinds of amazing things in the Lord. So bless your husband with the grit. All right. Um, band. Hey guys, you need to be on band. I just said it, but please join band because when you join band, you're staying connected with more people. Um, we're off pretty much off of the Facebook part of the portion. Um, and we have band and it's a little bit um, more conducive to, what we do. Uh, so there aren't as many um, uh, sad things that happen to us um, with band. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. Hey, do you guys, have you all listened to Charlie's new podcast, The Messy Antics? It's hysterical. I love it. She, she interviews people and she talks real, the real deal. And, um, and she's always asking them questions about something messy that's happened in their, in their walk. And it's just really great to find out that you're not alone. If you've had some problems like serving shrimp on your first Shabbat dinner, or, you know, just little things like that. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Messy antics podcast. You can view it um, on any of your podcasts. Look it up. Go for it. Lots of fun testimonies. Uh, Stephanie, do you have anything that you wanted to announce? I know that you're teaching tomorrow. Is that available to everybody on the LAM network? Yes. So actually, okay. um, if you know Lauren Cruz, she and yeah. I have a show called um, Living Waters, Falling Deeper in Love with God's Word. So that okay. is on the Messianic uh, LAM network. And you can go. And if you just put in Messianic LAM network, we're on at five live. Um, and then it is recorded and you can view it like on Tuesday morning or whatever um, recorded. So, yeah. You knew that would happen, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm trying not to talk over anybody. So <laughs> hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. Oh, I love all your faces. Mwah! Love you guys. So good to see you. Nicole and Anna, how cute are you two? Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, hey, I haven't been on for a while. I'm like a newbie again, all over again. I am chatting as a guest. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, let's get started. We have the most amazing portion today. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. This is, this is significant. <laughs> as if they're not all. Yes. <laughs> they are really good though. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of go over maybe some of the highlights, but not all of them, just a few of them. And then um and then we're going to just jump right in, okay? Wonderful. Okay, so uh Genesis 18. Parsha Vayera. And in Hebrew it means and he appeared. And why is that? Because the first three words of that portion in Hebrew are, 
he appeared and it's talking about the holy one the holy one appeared he appeared to abraham all right Mm -hmm. um and so we're going to talk about the promise of a son so we're going to talk about um a little bit about that and i have so many things going on in my mind that i want to just jump in but let me just give you an overview and then we're going to talk about abraham's intercession and we will talk about bum 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 sodom and gomorrah <laughs> that is Hello, are we living that right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be talking about uh, a little bit about Lot and maybe and about a lot about Sarah and how the Holy One renewed her womb. He restored life to her and also to Abraham, which is a, a little bit overlooked here, guys, but uh, to not today. Today, we're going to talk about it. And then we have Ishmael and Hagar and Stephanie, you've got some really great insight. I can't wait to hear from you. Um, covenant of uh, Abimelech and Abraham and the binding of Isaac. Okay. How significant is that? And um, let's see, what else are we going to talk about? Hmm. Okay, so that's kind of like the overview, the basic overview of the major points of these chapters. But this is just an amazing portion. And Stephanie, this week, as we um, as we were studying this, I know that for me, like the main point that kept hitting me over and over and over again is that there is nothing impossible with God. So true. Yeah. And I, I was looking at how often Jesus, Yeshua said that in the New Testament, how he reiterated that over and over again, uh, that there is nothing. He, he says in um, Matthew and in Luke, in a couple places, he says, there's no, with man, these things are impossible, but with God, there's nothing impossible. And isn't that a relevant word for today? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Especially um, where we're at in the world. Mm. It is just so essential that we focus on that. With God, there's nothing impossible. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. That's why I loved that worship. Oh my gosh, I loved that worship before we started. And, and singing together, singing uh, about Adonai being one, mm. uh, his unity, he is in, he is unity and he is calling forth his people and he is calling them in the way that they will hear because that's how, that's how he loves. Mm. He meets us where we are. He meets us how we respond. He knows exactly how we, how we are to get connected to him and it's each one individually and he is calling forth his people and it's so exciting um uh, so nothing's impossible so i stephanie and i prayed earlier today uh and um stephanie i really enjoyed that time of prayer that we had and one of the things that we prayed for was that today would be a day that those of you that are in situations where you truly need a miracle whether it is financial, whether it is physical, whether it is emotional, whether you need a job or you need to move or you're, you have issues with your family or your friends or whatever, just, you know, slide it in there right now. We prayed earlier and I believe that the Holy One already has sent the answers. They are there they are, they will be revealed in his perfect timing, but he has not forgotten you. You are in the forefront of his mind as his beloved, and his eyes are focused on each and every one of you. And today, as we're reading through this portion, I just, Stephanie and I both, we really just want you to know how valuable you are in the kingdom and how valuable you are individually to the Holy one, but collectively, because it's not just about one. Mm -hmm. It's not just about our relationship with God. And then we're good. 
It's about our relationship with God so that we can have relationship with others. We bless him and he blesses us so that he can bless others through us. And, and I know that your healing is on its way. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know that those financial issues, you just keep thanking God. He is going to see you through. It's going to be something that you couldn't have even imagined. And we want to hear your testimonies. And um, and Stephanie, what else when we were praying? What else were we praying for? Well, what we stuck praying? out to me as well is, um, you know, growing up, most of the stories we we think of stories in the Old Testament, they were Sunday school stories. But remembering that. God was very active in, in all of these people's lives to bring about his story, his redemption and his restoration. And not one of them are just meaningless people um, any more than all of us and our stories and what God is doing to redeem us and to restore us are not meaningless. They're meaningful and they're true stories. And, and it's, I think it's going back and looking where was God in all of these people's lives? And then you can, um, Hebrews is one of my favorite books. And so when you turn to Hebrews then, and you see that hall of faith and in chapter 11, and you see kind of like a little bit more of their story. And you see that, that even though they didn't accomplish or didn't see the promise that was made to them, they did know it. And maybe with spiritual eyes, they knew it, you know, they saw it and knew it. But, um, and I think that that's kind of how we can be as well. We may not see something with our physical eyes, but in our spirit, we are able to see the promises. We are able to see the healing, you know, the, the answer to prayer that it may not happen tomorrow. It may not even happen next week or next month, but, but all prayers are answered in one way or another, even if it's just a wait to wait. And they certainly had those, you know, Abraham and Sarah, which we're going to see, they had to wait. Their prayers were answered at a very old and unexpected time, but God told them to wait and they waited. Um, so, you know, kind of iffy there, they kind of tried just like we, right? We tried to fix it on our own. Okay, but well, God <laughs> said this was going to happen. I'll just try to do it on myself and, and make it happen. But we see the uh, fruit of that is not always pleasant, so. But yeah, they're not just stories. These are real people who lived real lives and God intervened and worked in their lives and the same as us today. I love that because um, it helps us when we look at these as real stories and not just fairy tales. <laughs> or Sunday when we, Sunday yeah, school. Sunday school, you know, with the little, uh, for those of us that are older, the little little uh, felt figures that went up on the felt board. <laughs> um, this is real life. And we are, we are being allowed glimpses into people's lives. And just as right now, a lot of you are facing um, issues. A lot of you are facing the need to be healed. Physically, I see um, Sombra. There's several of you on here that are that need that, and we are we are believing God for that. Um, this is your story, and and you're walking it out, and you are the only Bible that a lot of people are going to be reading. Mm -hmm. And so we we want to stand with you and encourage you and trust that the Holy One who is able to do anything uh, that he will move on your behalf. And he is already, you know, he already is moving on your behalf. So he's so good. We talked about, um, we talked a little bit about uh, God appearing. Stephanie, um, God appeared uh, and, and he was appearing to Moses. And then all of a sudden these three men show up. Abraham. Mm-hmm. I mean, did I say Moses? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're too close. Oh, yeah. Anybody can do this job, right? That's what Charlie always says. Anybody can do this job. Uh, yeah, Abraham uh, is at, sitting at the tent and in the heat of the day. And these three, and I love how it says, 
he the he looked up the lord was there and he looked up and then these men were appeared you know quickly <laughs> so it's kind of like wow where did they come from and what kind of men were they hmm that's part of the story yeah. right it's very interesting because one of the things i um had learned recently that when god takes abraham and you know the story lot chooses his area that he's going to and we'll talk more about that in this part mm -hmm. right and then abraham gets whatever he wants what's left basically and right and and jesus or god tells him to look up and see you know and and it was described that that wasn't just with his physical eyes that was with his spiritual eyes he was seeing like what god was doing and he, and almost to the point that he saw in the future what things were going to look like and we can almost see that same wording here because it said he lifted up his eyes to see and i mean and here comes jesus really actually this is jesus and and, and angels coming and now did he see them coming before they actually came we don't know but but it, that it, there's a spiritual sense to this as well in in that wording so mm -hmm. oh yeah <clears throat> we we learn throughout the scriptures uh, every every time the Torah cycle starts over again, we're going to be learning throughout the entire Torah that that there is something so significant about raising your eyes up and looking up. Why a? It's to look up, and um, you know my little my little thing that I love to do is with the Hebrew alphabet. And this week has been the Gimel in some of my classes. Um, we're studying the Gimel this week. And the Gimel is a camel with a long neck and he lays flat on his feet. And then when he stands up, you're lifting your head up. Well, that is very spiritually significant because the Gimel, the, the, the one who is, um, uh, carries and, and, and has all of this provision from the father uh, and he's taking, he wants to take off and go give it to others. Mm -hmm. The generosity it's talking about, like with Abraham, he was, he was the epitome of generosity and hospitality. He really teaches us this gift. And, um, but the important thing is that it's in the lifting up. So when you look at a camel, you have to raise your eyes up because they're so tall and their neck is so long. So, uh, this happens over and over throughout the Torah. We are called to look up, to look, to to raise our head and to settle our eyes upon the Holy One mm -hmm. spiritually mm -hmm. and also physically. <laughs> look up. Right. And and in that act of obedience, um, there is great um a great significance in your spirit. Uh, when you have that act of obedience to lift your eyes up and begin looking. So there's provision. Mm -hmm. Okay. You so you mentioned that mm -hmm. Abraham was generous. And oh, yeah. I don't know that we realize that when he tells his um, Sarah and the other servants to need three measures of fine flour and prepare bread loaves, that's like 80 loaves of bread. Right. That's no small thing. It's a month's Can worth of food. Yeah. It's a month's worth of food per person. Yeah. It's amazing how, how much that was. And and we, we're not given any time frame here either. So we don't know exactly like how long all this took. How long how long did people wait for dinner to be served, you know, or or that lunch or meal to be served when you're making 80 loaves of bread? Yeah. So. I would have a hard time with that. Sorry. I mean, that's just the truth of it. <laughs> when I get hungry, it's like I have to eat right yes. now. <laughs> hungry. But yeah, hungry. but that's that's very generous. And that's that's very. like and and I've heard about this even in like um when you go to Israel and you come across these like better ones, ones, you know, mm -hmm. and you see the very, very generous they will give you everything off their shelves mm -hmm. everything in their pantry so to speak mm -hmm. that they have to serve you and they will do it and you see that actually play out in scripture yes absolutely and 
that also, um, just real quick, uh, when you hear the idiom uh, um, having a, um, oh, gee, now I forget. It's having a bright eye mm -hmm. or having a dim yes. eye. It is, it, it that is um, directly a related to generosity. A good eye an is, evil eye. is being generous and an evil eye is being stingy because being stingy is evil because everything that we have is because the Holy One provided it to us. So we don't have any business right. not being generous. Right. Um, and so anyway, that, that just, just mm -hmm. kind of hit me. So um, I wanted to, to mention Stephanie and jump in here with me. Um, so there, there's this, there's scripture here. Uh, where is Sarah, your wife? One of the angels is asking, or the Lord, one of the angels, he said, um, I'm going to return in a year and uh, Sarah is going to have a son in a year. And Sarah, mm -hmm. Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Now, Abram and Sarah were old, advanced in years. Sarah had stopped having the way of women. Um, uh, let's see, the way of women. And so Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I've grown decrepit, can I have desire and my Lord so old, <laughs> my Lord, so old, it's an idiom. It means his pieces and parts aren't working. <laughs> so it wasn't just Sarah, <laughs> Abraham, it, it mentions it several times in here <laughs> that, uh, that there was an issue, uh, with that. So he wasn't able to have children either. And uh, isn't that so, isn't that so important for us to look at the story coming from no way to win? There's no possible way, no way on earth, mm -hmm. right? But God, hallelujah. So yeah. whatever it is, it's in your life, lady. I'm just ladies, I'm just encouraging you so much trust him. There's nothing impossible with him. Lay it before him um, and begin worshiping and thanking him and praising him for his will to be accomplished. And he may change your mind or he may solidify that yearning inside of you. And you just keep bringing it to him, bringing it to him, bringing it to him. He loves that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. Can so I mention something here. Yes, please. So back in the curse curses mm -hmm. when um god was cursing the ground and then also when he spoke to eve and he talked about she would have pain in childbirth and doing some research on that it was about not just pain but like sorrow it was that kind of pain it was the sorrow grief type of thing and it was think of it sorrow or grief in pregnancy and conception because that's it's actually those two words more than ch the act of childbirth giving birth so it's there so he's telling them that or telling her that there will be sorrow in pregnancy and conception mm -hmm. and we can see that because who's the first woman we come across who is barren who cannot have a child is sarah she's the first person because in the perfect garden of eden every woman would have given birth to a healthy baby and after that curse, after the fall, in a sense, that now no conception and no pregnancy is going to be end up with a light birth. Let's put it that way. And there's going to be miscarriages. There are going to be place times that people won't conceive. And that's all part of the fall. But but we see that every time there's a barren woman, that this baby, that she in that when the Lord opens her womb and allows mm. her to conceive. Mm that this child is very special. This child is a child of promise or a special way that God's going to use that child. And mm -hmm. um, and it's very beautiful when you think of it that way, that it's a special thing. You know, it's not just, it's not because of her. It's because the Lord didn't want her to have any other children, but this one. So let's, let's name a few. Um, I'll start. Anna. John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. Go. Hannah and Samuel. Hannah, Samuel. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, and in a way, we can even think of um, Mary and, and, and Elizabeth, right? Yes, Elizabeth. 
Yes, mm -hmm. that's John, from John the Baptist. I mean, oh, that's know, true. Let's he go. Was, was uh, and yeah, and um, there there were several, and Samson, of course, yes, mm, Samson. <laughs> that's so great. Mm -hmm. So, so this is what we're this is what we're looking at. Every one of those was an impossibility mm -hmm. until the father stepped in. So here we go, Abraham. Um, uh, Abraham is now interceding. Um, the angels are going to uh, move on towards Sodom. Whoops. And Abraham uh, starts bargaining with the Lord, Stephanie. <laughs> what did you tell me this morning earlier about bargaining or, 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 or uh, asking the Lord over and over about something? Mm, I forget what, oh, oh well, you were I, saying that he's not afraid of that. Oh, well, he's not. And then the thing is, is like you go to the um, parables where, where she was basically, go, you find this woman going to the judge and asking over and over and over and the man in the street yelling, son of, son of David, son of David, heal me, heal me. And, and asking over and over and over until they got an answer. And, and the Lord uses that as as one of his parables, even like, don't stop, you know, keep asking, keep knocking on the door, keep seeking, keep asking, and the door will be opened and, and your prayer will be answered. And, and I think it's about that persistence, but it's that brazen, it's that, um, hoopa, what, what is it? The word? Yeah. I forget the yeah. word. Chutzpah. But, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I got that word somewhere in my mind, but yeah. yeah, it's that brazen tenacity to ask and keep asking. And the Lord doesn't, mm -hmm. he doesn't mind. He's big enough to handle that. And unless he tells you, now, I don't know about you, but yeah. I remember praying. I mean, I remember praying for someone once who had cancer yeah. and I remember the Holy spirit speaking and just saying, don't ask me to heal him anymore. And, and I said, well, why Lord? And he goes, because I'm taking him to heaven. I'm taking him to be with me. That'll be his healing. And, 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 and even in my, like, did I really hear that? Right. And so the next day I pray and the Lord reminds me, don't ask me to heal him. Don't pray that way, you know? And so sometimes the Lord would tell you to stop, stop praying that way, because that's not going to be, my answer is not going to look like you want it to. And, and I don't know that he does that often. He's only done it to me once, but, but in other cases, he wants us to keep asking. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this whole thing with Abraham interceding for, for uh, Saddam and Gomorrah, uh, what hit me today when, mm -hmm. I, when I was reading over it again, um, when, when the Lord finished, when he was done, Abraham, Abraham was completed his quest mm. and the Holy one agreed and Abraham had presented everything that he could present to the Holy one and the Holy one agreed, Hey, if there's 10, I'll save the whole city. Mm. And as soon as that occurred, that was the end of it. And it's like in court, when the when both parties have have you know uh laid out their desires you know mm -hmm. given their mm -hmm. yes then the judge rules and then the judge stands up and he leaves mm -hmm. and that's exactly what happened here that's cool and it hit me that is exactly what happened it's like a courtroom um and then he said and in verse 33 now when he had finished speaking to abraham adonai left and right. abraham returned to his place as soon as it as soon as the negotiations were over the holy one stood up it's sealed it's done i will honor your request mm -hmm. and then that's it and and abraham didn't go well what about fod he didn't because he knew that he had reached it he had he had God had agreed to everything that he was going to agree. And there was no more discussion. So I don't know, that just really hit me with, you know, especially with the court system, you mm -hmm. know, that, that is the, that's the Holy one's way of doing it. Right. And it's interesting because 
if you read then in 19, it talks about Sodom, um, I'm sorry, Lot, his wife, his mm -hmm. sons, his daughters, and his sons-in-law. Mm -hmm. Did that add up to 10? Was that something that yeah. could have been in Abraham's mind that, hey, Lot has wow. 10 in his family? Because there's definitely, you know, we don't know how many sons he has. We don't know how many daughters he has, but he has two son-in-laws. And so, or at least... I think it says plural somewhere, his son's in law. Um, so there there could have very well been 10 people in his family that maybe Abraham had in mind that will you will you save just Lot's family? So I don't know that they add up to 10, but I just I we don't know, do we? But that is so fantastic, Stephanie. What a great, what a great insight. And and if you guys are looking for it, it's 19 verse 14. Mm -hmm. That is so good and in 12 huh. as well it says his son-in-law your sons and your daughters and whoever is else is related to you in the city so mm -hmm. there could have been very well 10 people yeah i was reading um I, I was reading a commentary uh uh on the ancient near east and um something struck me when they were talking about it they said that they were talking about uh, Lot's wife and how she looked back and became a pillar of salt. And so we have this image of her glancing over her shoulder as they're running and turning into a pillar of salt, like frozen and, you know, <laughs> in motion. Um, right. But uh, looking back is more of an idiomatic way of saying that she returned. Mm that she actually turned around and, and returned. Wow. Uh, and so that's the thing that when the fire and brimstone hit the city, when everything was um, torched, right. she would have been ashes or, or like a pillar of salt. Right. She would have been, she would have been, I mean, it was like an atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. So disintegrated disintegrated yeah mm -hmm. and then what what would happen if she if then the wind would come and she would disappear right uh That's and a really good point and that just really grabbed me that um you know sometimes we just learn these little things like this it's not about it, it wasn't about um you know just a you know a, she had left her children there and she probably wanted to go back mm-hmm Yes. You know? And she was forced. I mean, the angels grabbed them by the hand. Right. It tells us specifically that the angels grabbed him by the hand and he yanked them out. <laughs> because it sounds like none of them really wanted to leave. And he's yeah. like, I'm determined. And it's mm -hmm. almost like he determined to save them because of Abraham. Mm -hmm. so yeah. He's like, I'm, yeah. I'm taking you out. I'm just, you're going to go with me or go kicking and screaming. Yeah. You know? And, and the thing was that Abraham's petition to the Holy One was, was heard and God in his generosity answered and saved Lot and his family. Um, you know, there was nothing that Abraham could have imagined that, you know, Lot's wife would return, but she did. Uh, but he, but he had, fa the father had the grace to save Lot and his daughters because Abraham petitioned him and the Lord said, yes, no problem. It's a done deal. So that, that was really, that was really amazing. Lots of things about that. Hey, how about if we talk about, um, you know, there's that thing, that, that, that thing that happened, <laughs> the thing of which we do not like to speak. A little uh, bit the, of incest there. Yeah. The girls thought, and, and I can totally understand why, you know, even the city that they went to, I guess, was on in flames. So they went to a cave. But I think that what they were thinking was the end of the world just happened and there's three of us left and right. we better start reproducing as soon as possible. <laughs> right. Right. Or they just Golly. watched their their betrothed, you know, because yeah. it, it actually says that they weren't, they were going to marry them. Right. So they were more or less betrothed. That's, mm -hmm. that's kind of hidden in there, but mm -hmm. they weren't quite, but they were still considered sons-in-law because they were betrothed. And so right. they weren't married and they just watched everyone that they knew and loved be burned up. And so, yeah, I would think that would be quite hopeless. 
that would be pretty that would be pretty difficult right because we don't we don't know what the what what their relationship was with the holy one it doesn't mm -hmm. really tell us but um we know that that city was in in the throes of hamas just mm -hmm. like at noah's time just like what's happening mm -hmm. in some parts of the world right now and so they were affected one way or the other they were affected so anyway then they ended up having children and they probably found out not too soon after that that the world was not ended and and there were yeah. yikes okay so let's move on quickly chapter 20 sarah's renewed hallelujah yes so this whole story stephanie what what is your take on this whole thing? I know that you had some some ideas about the whole thing. Sarah and Abraham take two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the second time this has happened. And they go into the city, Gerar, and they say Sarah is now Abraham's sister so that he doesn't get killed. Mm -hmm. And so what really hit me with this, and, and I, I really want to hear what you have to say about it. Um, but what hit me with this was that, that Abraham wasn't protecting his wife, but Sarah was protecting him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is just another uh, another opportunity for us to see um, how important it is the role that women have in relationships and in you know in 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 uh, families um, from the beginning of time. Women have been protectors, mm -hmm. and we don't really think about that much. We we kind of go, well, the husband's the protector, and you know, the, and yes, the husbands are stronger and, you know, men are built differently than women. So they have stronger, bigger bones, bigger muscles, et cetera, et cetera. But the role of women is protector. And um, oh, I see it in the Hebrew all the time. Mm -hmm. The imagery is that of a, of a nursemaid picking up a baby and holding the child close to her. Everything that that child needs is being taken care of. Mm -hmm. That woman is physically protecting that child. Mm -hmm. And this is how the father shows us his love and his concern for us because he has the heart of a mother. Mm -hmm. and, and Misty and I talked about mm -hmm. that last week. Did she you? brought up nurturing. And, ah. um, and so we talked about, and El Shaddai is yes. that very look of a mother holding mm -hmm. their baby up against their breast and it's that yes. whole look and that's what yeah. El Shaddai here is what he how he revealed himself to Abraham Isaac and Jacob and so yeah. he was their protector yeah and their and and the one who would provide everything so when we when we i guess for me the the big thing is that when we try to place on uh, our husbands things that are innately in us, mm -hmm. um, it always brings a, a friction and a tension. And, you know, we all need to just stay in our lane. <laughs> you know, women are, I mean, I remember being a, a you know, a 19 year old mom and a spider crawling across my baby's forehead and I grabbed that spider and it was dead before it its little legs hit hit more skin that is the ferociousness that is innately in us as as mothers mm -hmm. um, it's an amazing thing and God gave us that he gifted us with that he also gifted us with the ability to to love and protect our spouses mm -hmm. and and that is, it's really important that we understand that that is part of our role. Um, it's not us being masculine. It's not us trying to be the man. That's right. not it at all. Uh, not at all. It is us walking in the design that God created us to walk in. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that so. design comes back, or I should say goes back mm -hmm. to not just Adam and Eve, but even mm -hmm. the words male and female and what yes. they mean in Hebrew. And that is a great study, which I don't have time to do, but that's a great study. Look up the difference yes. between just man and woman, but male and female. And those yep. words have very significant meaning in Hebrew. Yes, they do. Fantastic. All right, sis. Um, I love the part where Abimelech goes, hey, what gives? Mm -hmm. hey, what what I ever do to you? <laughs> who, who says God doesn't have a sense of humor? This is just so right. funny. What and, have I done to you? And how yeah, what have I, I done to you? And, and, and when you're reading this, you, you understand that Abimelech, <laughs> his pieces and parts weren't working either. <laughs> and, and all of the women's wombs were closed. So there was wow. no birthing happening. Mm -hmm. And Abimelech had a harem of women and Sarah was in that harem and he couldn't, he, he was physically um, disabled. There's no way that he could have um uh caused the seed of abraham to be questioned mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. how to put it politely let's put right. it politely yeah <laughs> and and he says you know he's like i'm not really lying my she is my father's daughter right. though not my mother's daughter and it's interesting because the word daughter the word even father can also mean grandfather and yeah. so more than likely she was his niece. She uh -huh. was his father or his father's granddaughter because there's no daughter, mm -hmm. son and daughter can also mean granddaughter, or grandson. Yes. So um, mm -hmm. you have to look at the words in that culture and what they meant. Mm -hmm. We have so many words that describe our different relatives and then they didn't. They mm -hmm. were just mother, father, sister, right. brother. Right. They, and and father um, of in Hebrew can also mean anyone who you know Abraham was Lot's father in the sense that he provided for him, he took care of him, he brought him under his wing. Yes, and in and in the Hebrew culture, anyone a rabbi, anyone Yeshua, uh, anyone that taught and trained and and brought people in and, and covered them. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, they were called father. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like we, in, in English, we say the father of invention. Um, invention doesn't have a father, <laughs> but the father of invention is the one, the one who taught it, learned it, trained it, saw it come into fruition. So right. Yeah, even the word father, we have to understand that mm -hmm. it has all it has a really amazing um uh imagery behind it. Mm -hmm. So okay, let's see, where else are we? Okay, so um I love that I love that when uh Abimelech released Sarah and then he gave Abraham all kinds of things for him to go out and, you know, all the wealth and everything. Um, when that happened, then he was, a he was healed and able to produce children mm -hmm. and all of the women in the, under his, um, within his kingdom, they were able again to produce children. So their wombs were opened. Right. Isn't that interesting that, that Sarah was right in the middle of the wombs being closed and then the wombs being opened. Mm -hmm. And who else was in, who, who else? All of those women we talked about earlier, Hannah, uh, Elizabeth, Mary, all, all of these women um, that, that their wombs were closed. Uh, they were in that seed. They're from that seed of Sarah. They are. You know, it's kind of like all the DNA is there. Mm -hmm. And then now look, we can, we can look back and see how that all happened. But Mary, it was incapable of conceiving because she was a, a young virgin. Mm -hmm. She didn't have a man. She didn't, right. she was chased. She was engaged, but they had not entered into the, 
the part of the marriage where they were together. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that, there you go. So we always want to see these main principles that are happening in the word. We always want to look at them from a, a, an overview of where else in the word do we see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where else do we see this principle? Right. Where is because, this mentioned before? Yeah. I mean, you know, some of us maybe have never dealt with the agony and the grief of, uh, of, of miscarriage or of not being able to conceive or not have children. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we, we don't, we maybe don't have that emotional point of reference, but these women did. And anyone who has gone through that can look at these women and say, father, look, look how you have, you have blessed them. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that their children might not be, their children might be children that are brought in. It can be all, all you know, different kinds of ways that God will bring that healing and bring uh, life. That just sounds horrible. I want to just like backpedal that. This is not what I'm trying to say. I'm not comparing um, mm -hmm. women who are not able to have children. I, I don't mean that at all. I'm just saying that there are examples in the Bible of grief. There are examples in the Bible of people who um, are not able to achieve something that is really on their heart to achieve. But boy, is God able to make a way where there is no way. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, we see that here. Um, if we can, we, go mm -hmm. ahead, go ahead. You know, you go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, of course, with the birth of Isaac, um, we see, you know, even even the competition between Sarah and Hagar, because, you know, I know when I was struggling to get pregnant, we were four years before we we conceived. But my sister was getting pregnant, you know, and and it was like no problem for her. And there was and it was very difficult for mm -hmm. me to watch her you know, she decides we're going to start next month and boom, she gets pregnant next month. And it's been four years for me. But, and so there's that pain that goes along. And even though I, I finally did conceive, um, it was still painful going through that. And you can see that pain with Sarah and you can see, you know, where my sister even went through a period where she, she didn't know how to be compassionate to me. It was difficult. She's like, I don't know, you know, she couldn't understand, but and here we have Hagar really not understanding, but only giving, giving Sarah that kind of that evil eye, like looking down on her, you're less than, than you're less than a woman because you can't have this child. Um, and then Sarah's hurt. And then God agrees with Sarah and says, no, now that Sarah's had her baby, this is the child of the promise. And now Ishmael needs to go. And, and Hagar needs to go because the, we're not going to have this competition, even though this competition has right, it's been for centuries. Um, it's never, it's never ended. Um, but we see it start here, but, um, and it's just even the way, but we don't realize here, why was Hagar the Egyptian even in this story? And it was because of the first time that Ad or Abraham told someone that Sarah was his sister. That first time that he deceives Pharaoh and then he he's told, you know, this plague comes on them and and like what happened here? Oh yeah, she's my wife actually. And no, get out of here, just leave, take everything you want. He gives him servants, male servants, female servants and gold and animals and all of that makes him very wealthy. But because of that one thing, Hagar is now in the story. Mm -hmm. And now Hagar can be used to go beyond what God planned. And, um, and so we see that's how she enters the story, but what's interesting is her name means stranger. So she was a stranger in this family, a stranger in this land, but what did God tell Abraham that his seed would be a stranger in another land and whose land is that, but Hagar's land. So we see the tables turn. We see this whole thing that's happening with Hagar as foreshadowing of what's going to happen 
because what happens here? She's given bread by Abraham to leave. He gives her some pro provisions to go. So you see bread. Where do you see bread in the Exodus story, but the story of them taking their unleavened bread with them, right? When they leave, you see that they're in the wilderness. Hagar here. And so I'm starting in 21, 14. She took the bread and the water. And then she went and wandered about in the wilderness. And where do we see that? But in Exodus. So we see this foreshadowing. An angel of the God of a I'm sorry, angel of God called to her from heaven and said, what troubles you? This is in um, 17 tells her not to be afraid. This is exactly what we see Moses doing to the Israelites, telling them, and they have an angel of the Lord leading them. Um, 15, water from the skin was finished. They had no water. This lines up with being in the wilderness. And they come, they have no water for three days and three nights, and they finally come to a river and it's bitter. So it's like all these little foreshadowings. Um, and then what does God do? He opens her eyes and he shows her a well of water. And he did the same thing with the the Israelites, except that it was bitter, but he made it clean. So he's constantly providing. And then what does she do? She calls him the God who sees. And, and how can we relate to that? Because maybe you have a need, like we were talking about, Brenda was talking about earlier, but maybe there's a need you don't even know you have yet but the Lord already sees it and he's already made a way to meet that need. And sometimes we don't even know what we need until he points it out. Sometimes we don't know what we need. And then he points it out to us and it's like, that's what I needed. <laughs> wow. I didn't even know that's where I, that's where I needed to be, or this is what I needed to be doing. And how many times has that happened in your lives? Because it certainly has happened to me. I didn't know I had a need until he pointed it out to me. Um, I didn't know I had a desire until he woke it up. And so here's what he's doing. He sees, though, everything we need. And he saw what Hagar needed, and she calls him the God who sees. And and I think we can we can all still relate to that. He's still the God who sees. He's still the God who knows, the God who nurtures, the God who provides. He has never ceased to be that, and that's how real these stories are because he's showing us who he is through these stories, through these people who lived. And everything that you just said continues on with uh, the binding of Isaac mm -hmm. because he is the God who sees and right. he is the one who, who said, look up again, look mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. and who provided he lifted um, up his eyes. Yes, he that did. And four, mm -hmm. 22, four. So ladies, it's, we have only 30 seconds left of our time, but that the binding of Isaac was amazing. Um, we know the story and, and, and it is the story of redemption. It is the story of salvation. It is the story um, that, that is, um, that teaches us about Yeshua and how he was the perfect the perfect sacrifice mm -hmm. and God made a way even with Abraham and um, his son Yitzhak. Mm -hmm. And so ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. We, boy, we sure love you. Um, do you want to stay with us for the after party? You can just um, jump on to zoom here mm -hmm. and we'll let you in and, and you can stay and chit chat with us for um, a few minutes Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us. This is your first Friday of the month. It is now here where I am in Berlin. It's Shabbat. It's beautiful. I love you. Thank you so much for all of the things that are in the, um, here you have in the um, chat here, ladies, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Love you. Stephanie, how fun is this? Yes. How about next pleasure. month, same time, same bat channel? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, ladies, join us over in the um, after party and we will see you there. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Is there music to cue? Can somebody cue the music? All right.